Hey, well, now I want us to celebrate some of these amazing properties of logs that we've been thinking about that are hard to kind of wrap our minds around early on, but once we get in the habit of embracing them, in fact, we're going to see they are just awesome. So first of all, there's that great product property, which says that the log of a product is the sum of the logs. So log of xy is log x plus log y. Really great, great property. The quotient property is a similar thing. It says that the log of a quotient is the difference of the log. So log of x over y is log of x minus log of y. And the power property tells us that if I have log of x to a power y, that y can come out way in front as a coefficient, and I can say that equals y log x. So armed with that, we can just, uh, let me just remind you of a couple of little fun facts. These are just real throwaway facts here. Remember that log of 1 is always 0 because b to the 0 equals 1. You know that. Uh, log uh, base b of b is 1 because b to the first power equals b. You know that one. Uh, natural log. Remember, natural log is just log base e. So this is log base e of e. Well, e to the what power gives me e? Well, e to the first power. So that equals 1. You know that. Here's the real hard one. b to the log base b of x. That always equals x. That's that mathematical tongue twister. And then its partner, its sister in crime, uh, log base b of b to the x equals x. And that's this, exactly this one. See, if you see it, pull it out in front. Bleep, bleep, and there we go. And then log base b of b, we said it's 1. So there you go. Okay, so now armed with these properties, I want us to take a look at how we can actually use them to simplify expressions that are uh, logarithmic in nature. So log base 3 of 18 plus log base 3 of 4.5. Now this sounds really, really hard. And it is until we realize that really what we see is the sum of logs. And the sum of logs can be written as the log of a product. That's the key. So in fact, this expression equals log base 3 of a product, namely the product of 18 times 4.5. 4.5 is 9 halves. So I'm going to write it as 9 halves. So check that out. That's a big deal, right? Here I got log of something plus log of something, and now I see it's log of the product of those somethings. And now I can actually simplify this. So log base 3, well, let's see, 18, that's 9 times 2, and so that 2 and that 2 downstairs cancel, so I'm just left with 9, and so I have 9 times 9. Well, that's 9 squared. I could write actually 9 as 3 squared, and so that's going to be 3 squared squared, which is 3 to the 4th. And now I can do a variety of things here, depending upon your mood. You could either think about what this means. This is the exponent I have to raise 3 to in order to make it equal 3 to the 4th. So what's the answer? Well, the answer would be 4. Another way is to use that property I just showed you, which says zip, that if you have an exponent, you can pull the exponent out in front. And so I could write this as 4 log base 3 of 3, and that's just 1, so 4 times 1 is 4. So there's lots of ways of getting to it, but all correct roads will lead you to an answer of 4. So in fact, this crazy complicated looking thing, log base 3, 18, plus log base 3 of 4.5, is just a fancy, fancy way of saying 4. Isn't that cool? Awesome. Let's do one more together, because I think these are great fun. Here we see the natural log of e to the... 10th minus the natural log of e to the 4th. I want to do this a couple different ways, just because there's so many ways of doing these things. You can actually have fun uh, in a variety of ways. The first way is to notice I have the log, base e, of a difference. That tells me that I could use the quotient rule and write this as log of the ratio of those guys. So one thing I can do, so, so method one, so method one, is to say this equals the natural log of the quotient, e to the 10th divided by e to the 4th, because that's the rule, right? E, the log, natural log of x over y equals natural log of x minus natural log of y. So natural log of x minus natural log of y equals natural log of x divided by y, which is that divided by that. Now you can simplify natural log of e 
to the, well, if I have uh, 10 e's on top and 4 e's on the bottom, what do I do? Well, you subtract the exponents, and so I see e to the 6th. You can do this in a variety of ways. You can just think about it. Natural log, so is the log base e. So what's the exponent on e to make it equal e to the 6? Well, that equals 6. Or you could take the exponent, pull it out in front, and write this as 6 natural log of e. Natural log of e is 1, so it's 1 times 6. Anyway, the answer is 6. So that's one way of doing it. Let me show you a different way. So method two, and you can tell me which one you like better, is just to use this property right out of the get-go. Natural log of e to the 10, well, the 10 comes out in front, so that's going to be 10 natural log of e, which is 10 times 1, minus 4 comes out in front, and I see 4 times natural log of e, that's just 4 times 1, and what's, four min what's 10 minus 4? Turns out it's 6. So all roads lead to six if you do it correctly. So embracing these basic properties of logarithms are really going to allow us to take complicated looking things and really make them into child's play. The key facts to remember are oops, these two and the one that I dropped way down there, which says the product property, which says that the log base b of x times y equals log base b of x plus log base b of y. There, you can see it there, even though it's invisible. Once you know them really well like I do, you don't even need the signs. Get rid of the signs. You don't need the signs. It's all up here. That's where the log action is. So have fun thinking about logs and making these properties your own. I'll see you soon.